Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. We're here at the VinFast booth. I'm here with Craig and uh, Garth. No relationship to, uh, you know, uh, Wayne's world. But anyway, he, he's smiling anyway, so that's a good thing. And today what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about the, uh, the movement toward the, uh, the new vehicle on the block, uh, the uh, VinFast uh, F7. So I would like to ask the first question, and that is, when is the factory gonna open? There's a factory coming up in North Carolina. When can we expect to see the first product roll off the assembly line? No, I mean, it's super exciting. We've always already started preparing the ground out in North Carolina. So everything's going to be set as we then move through the next year. So as we get through to the end of 2024, you'll see the first cars roll off the line. But of course, we, you know, we're already producing our electric vehicles in Hanoi and yeah. we imported our first cars into California uh, just last month. Oh, cool. So if I, I, I remember going to the, uh, the show that was at... Uh, <laughs> Well, we, uh, as everybody knows, uh, we had gone to uh, the VinFest event. You guys invited us, we came down. I had a stunningly good time. I, I don't think I've ever experienced anything quite like, uh, quite like the, uh, VinFast, uh, the VinFast meeting, for sure. And uh, I, I was really taken with a car. I had never really driven one before, but as you probably know, um, the, the guy said, oh yeah, go as fast as you want, do anything you want. So I did, and uh, tragically a couple of uh, cones were, uh, were uh, uh, maimed in the, in the process, but I thought the car handled really well. I liked the uh, speed, I loved the comfort, everything seemed to be right where it was supposed to be. And the other thing that I really liked was the, um, how easy it is to go from your cell phone to the uh, uh, to your 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 main controller, uh, uh, I, I I was really really impressed. So, what? Uh what new things can you tell me about? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, that, that experience you had, that Vietnamese hospitality, that's something yeah, we try yeah. and put into the way we're, we're selling yeah. the cars and we're looking after people as well once they purchase the car. Mm. Um, in terms of newness, you know, the, the whole role of our technology department is to act as an integrator, bringing the best partners in the world on board, making sure that as you get into the car, you have that seamlessness and yeah. it can continue with you afterwards. So I think partners like here, bringing on board here, we'll be able to pull in all of the Navi data into the Navi unit and bring the latest information around charging points so you're always up to date, working with the likes of Amazon Alexa so we can have the right voice control so you can keep your eyes on the road. Yeah. It's really about partnerships here today at, at CES and the right technology partnerships yeah. and bringing them on board. At the same time, yeah, we've announced reservations opening in March for VF7 and VF6. Um, so adding two more friends to the family, if yeah, you like. And yeah. uh, now we have a full suite of four electric SUVs to offer our American customers. Wow, excellent. So what is the, uh, what's the price tag on something like this then? Something like this has actually not been announced yet. So we, as, as, oh. as Gareth has said, uh, we're taking reservations starting in March. Uh, and, and after that point, we'll at some point uh, obviously announce uh, the price that we're going to be coming to market with, also for the VF6. So the ones that were sold in California then, what are they? The, the, which, which version? The VF8. The the VF8. VF8. Yeah. So what are they going for? So VF8 is available for around $55,000. Yeah. Um, most of the customers in the US buy monthly payments though, right? So we've got the city yeah. edition now on the ground in California. You can get that from $599 a month. And I think the, the whole point of bringing the VF6, 7, 8 and 9 is to give more people opportunities to come to electrification within fast, whether you're in the compact segment or going all the way up to the, the luxury segment with the VF9. Yeah. And that, yeah. that choice is really what we're about. And that's why we do e-bikes, that's why we do scooters, that's why we do buses and really try and offer yeah, that full range yeah. of electric mobility. Well, one of the things that uh, actually, John McElroy is a friend of mine and, uh, and he said, hey Sandy, you, you gotta, you gotta uh, actually I heard it from two guys, uh, two, three, three folks that have sat in the car and he said, hey, you gotta, you gotta go and ask them about the, uh, the uh, outside mirrors, which I'd like to eliminate, but anyway, the outside mirror uh, a technology where all you do is look into, uh, look straight ahead, and the next thing you know, your mirrors adjust. So you want to go into any detail on that? I, I'm, I mean, that's a trick that I, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in. Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's different parts of the technology there at play. First of all, depending on who's jumped in the car, if it's uh, two people in a relationship, depending on who jumps in, it'll adjust to you. So the mirrors will react, yeah. and the seating will react, the steering will react. So it's all coming around you to be personalized for you as an individual. And I think that's the, that's the coolest thing for me about the, the way it personalizes itself around you. 
And then there's so much more technology packaged in to give you the right safety technology to be able to make sure that you've got your eyes on the road at all times. I think that's what we're trying to do is to, to really make a safe environment for you to drive so you can have fun. You mentioned earlier about how fun they are to drive. You know, that's what yeah, we want people fun. to do. Yeah. We don't want people to worry about the technology around them. We want them to enjoy it and make yeah. it more user friendly. Yeah, so that was, <clears throat> excuse me, that's one of the things that, uh, that I, I did like was um, the, uh, the anticipation of the car. Uh, it seems to know what you're going to do and it's already reacting to it. I, I don't know exactly whether that's AI or whatever. The guy's tried to explain it to me, but it's a little bit over my head. I, I, I really enjoyed that. I really did. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it must be something to do with the, uh, the uh, uh, vision system that you've got around the vehicle or something, but I, I really thought that that was kind of cool. So obviously cameras, lasers, all sort of pulling yeah, yeah, together to make yeah. the user experience seamless. So it's yeah. just trying to make it simple, not overburden people with technology, but just let them access it when they want to and make sure it's happening around them to keep them safe and let them have fun. So you mentioned uh, the US, uh, well, you mentioned California. Is there, a, uh, what's the plan in for rollout? What are the next states after California? So we're going to start in uh, 2023, continue, well, start in 2022 and 23, we're going to continue the rollout in California. Uh, and after that, we're going to pursue a, a rollout strategy of, of really where our customers are going to be, combined with where we can sell cars, I think, in the easiest uh, environment. Mm. Well, that is the, uh, that was the same strategy that Toyota and Honda used uh, when they came into the U.S. as well. They, uh, they basically almost eliminated everybody else in the California market. So uh, that's probably a, a cool way of making it start. Um, what about the, um, what about the, uh, like you, you may have heard the um, controversy associated with uh, getting a rebate um, from the government. Uh, how does that affect you? I think it's important that we build our business strategy around our customers rather than incentives. Like yeah. I think it's great the more everyone does, governments, cities, businesses, people, to move towards a more sustainable environment, more, more sustainable mobility, the better. But on the other side, our business strategy is built on building great electric SUVs, great customer service, and then offering those to, to the market at the, the right price. You know, we want everyone to be able to access electric mobility. Again, the reason for the four vehicles to give that breadth of accessibility of yeah. price point. Uh, and we believe that, you know, we'll be competitive on the marketplace regardless of incentives. Well, actually, I, I was reading a little bit about the incentives and uh, <clears throat> if you make more than 75,000 a year, uh, I mean, you're not, uh, if you make more than 75,000, you're not gonna get the incentive anyway. Uh, so, uh, I mean, in California, I think uh, shoeshine guys are making 75 grand. So it's uh, probably a non uh, a non event, as it were, or at least a non starter for a lot of the folks in California. They won't care at all. I think so I'm moving to California. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> my cousins all live there. They all live in San Diego now, uh, in the San Diego County, anyway. But uh, they haven't they haven't uh, pulled me uh, pulled me south yet. So, uh, anyways, it. I have a place to live. Why would I? <laughs> why would I buy a place? I go down. Hey, uh, Patrick. Hey, uh, you know, I, I can get uh, Maggie. Whatever. I can get a, a free room uh, whenever I need it. So. So I was going to say. Oh yeah. So uh, so California, if if you're going to come into the U.S., what about Europe? Where's your strategy there? This video is sponsored by Anchor and their Powerhouse 767 portable power station. With over 2,000 watt hours of battery capacity, up to 1,000 watts of solar input, and Anchor's ultra efficient GAN Prime technology, the Powerhouse 767 can keep you up and running longer, faster, and cleaner. This January, you can make the Powerhouse 767 your preferred device for home backup, outdoor recreation, and more at a reduced price using the discount code MonroeLive767. Be ready for anything with Anchor. So in Europe, we're focused on Germany, which is the biggest market in, in Europe overall, but it's also now the yeah. biggest market for electric vehicles, taken over from Norway. Uh, 
the Netherlands, Holland, uh, as well yeah, as France. Yeah. They're the three oh, focus markets. Oh, you can't call it Holland. It's only one small area. Well, when I, oh, uh, my God. Holland, I, I lived in Holland in Elsmere when I was young. <laughs> it is called Holland, so uh, well, I, the Netherlands to many people as well. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, uh, I, I mentioned the word, and the next thing you know, I got a lecture on uh, the geography and uh, well, it's my Dutch shoot friends. Myself. I lived in Ellesmere for two years as a kid, oh, so uh, I know the place quite well. And it's yeah, good yeah. fun, and it's an amazing market for electric vehicles. Yeah. They've got not only the incentives in place, but they've got the charging in place, and it's getting much better to be um, to be able to jump between different charging point operators. And I think yeah. it's one of the most important things that we make it easy and simple. Again, that's one of the technologies we brought into the car, certainly here in the US, is we allow people to roam across different charging networks yeah. by integrating it into the vehicle. Yeah. So, what do you reckon you're like? Uh, how much do you think you're going to sell in Europe then? What do you think the, uh, the volume will be? I think, again, my, my focus is around building demand and desire. You know, we have the production capacity yeah. in, Vin in Vietnam, and obviously we're now going to bring on board in 2024 the production capacity here in, in America. So that gives us a lot of scalability. So if we yeah. can build the right demand, we're starting in those three markets. There's a huge opportunity outside of there as well. And to be able to then start looking at you know, expanding beyond that um, will come when we, we build that right level of demand, build that credibility, build the right level of customer service, mm -hmm. and uh, we can grow from there. Uh, so maybe it's very similar to the US with California. Start there, make that work, yeah. um, and, and enjoy the time where you know, EV is expanding. It's coming up that technology S-curve yeah, at yeah. the moment, and it's just at the point where you know, we can have a car on the market and offer something to customers that are that are really waiting for electric vehicles because we all yeah. know that there's quite a long lead time for most electric vehicles right. whereas you know we have the production capacity to meet the demand yeah well i was, I was thinking as well you you, you mentioned uh, the netherlands and you mentioned germany um what about great britain uh i mean is there a, is there a market there or well, what well being a brit um, yeah, living I, yeah. in britain as well uh, definitely definitely a market there um but you know we're <laughs> focusing on you know, vehicles that have left-hand drive, you know, making sure that oh, we're, oh, we're building yeah. out that base first, you yeah. know, building up that base first, but absolutely like markets like, if you get left and right-hand drive, markets like the UK, markets like Norway, Australia. these are these are hubs, Australia, these are hubs that will, um, you know, will continue to grow, will continue to, to demand electric vehicles and demand more variety. And, you know, we'll certainly look at those and, yeah. uh, you know, we're long, long plans and uh, yeah. they're gonna be around for a while. Cool. Well, uh, is there anything else that we need to, to say about uh, VinFast? Uh, you've been very quiet here, Craig. I know. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Getting, got we're a spokesperson who knows, his, uh, who knows his stuff. So uh -huh. uh, we don't need to in that respect. So uh, uh, Gareth is uh, uh, really handled well. So I would just say uh, we're here at the show to show that we're back. We were here a year ago. Yeah. Uh, and to me, this is about delivering on some of the promises we made back then. Yeah as we deliver on all the rest and move it, move it into the future. So I think it's a great opportunity for VinFast. Uh, it's a great opportunity for people who don't know VinFast to come get to know us. You can see our product, you can experience in here in the, in the, in the immersion, and you can also go outside and drive our product. So for us, it's also about getting in front, getting the brand out there, and certainly getting the product out there. And I challenge, I challenge uh, just about anybody to find what VinFast is doing anywhere else. So. Yeah. And I think the VF8 that you mentioned that you can drive outside here, you can now test drive that as we get into January in California. And you know, the fact that it's here on the ground in Europe yeah, just a year yeah. after we said we would come and bring it here is uh, a really exciting time. Well, you're doing a fine job. So anyways, Craig, thank you so much. Good to see you. Yep. Thank you. And Garth, amazing. thank Great you discuss. so much. Cheers. And uh, and thank you for watching Monroe Live. Uh, we're here again at uh, at the uh, at the Consumers Electronics Show. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be back with more. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.